Hi, my name is Jenna and I'm going to be making chocolate cake for my final exam. So uh, my main points that I'm going to be talking about are um, the Maillard reaction. So um, the very top of my cake, it'll have uh, melted chocolate, it'll be kind of sprinkled on it, and I'll show you how I did that. And then my chocolate cake has quite a few entities that we actually talked about in the class, such as oil, salt, baking powder, baking soda, flour, and then eggs and milk. So we actually did talk about a lot in this class, and so I figured cake with a little bit of topping so that it would be a new topic um, would be perfect. So uh, what I went over is chocolate cake. So one of the entities that I found most important was baking powder. So baking powder is a dry chemical leavening agent. Um, it's a mixture of weak and weak alkali and weak acid. So it ends up being kind of neutral. And it's used for increasing the volume and lightening the texture of baked goods. So baking powder actually works by releasing the carbon dioxide bubbles in the batter and it's through an acid-base reaction. So it causes bubbles in the wet mixture and it expands and leavens the mixture. So instead of using yeast, we would use this because we don't want the bread-like texture, we want a cake-like texture. Um, so the most, most commercially available baking powders are made of an alkaline comp component, usually sodium bicarbonate, or also the same as baking soda, and then tartar, tartaric acid. Um, so that kind of makes it, um, because baking soda needs an acid, the um, baking powder actually does not because of the tartar, tartaric acid. I can never say that. Or cream of tartar, I guess. Um, and then also a starch, usually cornstarch or potato starch, mainly cornstarch. So I feel like baking powder is one of the most important components, so I thought I would talk about that. And then, of course, we have baking soda also for leavening. We have vegetable oil. Um, so vegetable oils, they have an interesting molecular structure. So it has the glycerol part and the fatty acid part. So, um, and then another interesting fact about vegetable, about vegetable oils, they are said to be saturated because their fatty acids have single bonds. So fatty acids, they can either have single bonds, double bonds, or um, I believe... I think that's it. Yeah. And so there's um, hydrogenated oils, there's partially hydrogenated oils, there is, there's just a lot of oils. <laughs> there's uh, unsaturated, saturated, hy hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated. It makes things very difficult pretty much. But um, so these are unsaturated because they have double bonds. Um, I'm sorry, the unsaturated fats have double bonds. These are um, single bonds. So it's saturated. Um, on heating, vegetable oils reach high temperatures of over 180 degrees Celsius, where boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. So it takes a lot more to actually bubble and get hot. Um, that's why food cooks actually like to fry, because it's quicker. Um, so, we're, let's see here, we used oil, salt, it actually takes away some of the moisture, so it does, it's not completely liquid, it's very convenient, also great for flavoring. Vanilla flavoring because it's chocolate cake. I have to have balance. And then baking cocoa, unsweetened. That way it can have a good sweetener balance with the two cups of sugar that I used. And then flour, it is mainly used as a leavening agent. So that way the um, cake can have a good rise and it has gluten in it. So that binds with the protein of the eggs and the milk. And that way it'll be a good texture. It can stay together but still fluffy. Now, my main thing that um, I like to focus on, which I already made everything, so here's my cake batter, which actually used a cup of boiling water, which I found pretty interesting. So it's pretty liquidy. liquidy. I'll pour it into two nine-inch pans. Um, it'll be a chocolate cake. I'm going to use uh, store-bought vanilla icing. I can't, I can't handle uh, confectioner sugar all over my uh, kitchen. So I'm using store-bought icing. And then what I used is actually... I melted Reese cups because I knew that I wanted to melt chocolate and for some reason we don't have any Hershey bars so I used melted Reese's which turned out better than expected so I used the Maillard reaction which just pretty much consists of um, non it's a form of non enzymatic browning so it's a chemical reaction between an amino acid and then a reducing sugar and then usually requires heat 
the amino acid that I had is actually kind of peanut butter. So peanut butter is a protein which has a lot of amino acids and then chocolate also has some too. But I thought protein would be very good with the peanut butter. And then the reducing sugar, the chocolate is huge <laughs> in the sugar portion. So it actually turned out pretty well. Um, so what I ended up doing was I um, just like caramelization, which is just the reducing sugar and um, Let's see here. Uh, caramelization is the reducing sugar, and it breaks down sucrose, so it makes glucose and fructose, um, and then they react with heat and then start to brown, and that forms caramel. Maillard reaction, it actually is a new array of molecules and aromatics, and um, it's just com it's different, but kind of the same as caramelization, just because of the heat and reducing of the sugars. So in the Maillard reaction, the carbonyl group of the sugar reacts with the nucleophilic amino group of the amino acid if you want to get all technical. So it forms a complex mixture of poorly characterized molecules responsible for a range of odors and flavors. So needless to say, my chocolate smells delicious. So I browned it in there. Um, it ended up kind of having to smush it, and so it got completely melted. Then I put it on parchment paper on my baker sheet and let it cool, and it got really flat. So what I'm going to end up doing is just cutting off a portion and then just kind of crunching it and that way it's kind of essentially like sprinkles. So it'll be a good add to the um, top of it, kind of a peanut buttery top. So I've tasted a little bit, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> so that's my Maillard reaction. I went over baking, baking powder a little bit over the rest of my ingredients, which when you think about it, every single ingredient is very important to a cake because it all makes a mixture of whether it has a good bond, whether it'll rise well enough, whether it'll work with 350 degrees, which my oven is preheating and kind of beeping at me. So it all works out, and I'm really excited to eat my cake. Thanks for watching.